Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the video where I teach you how to use type in annotations in Python. These annotations find their uses in libraries and static type checkers, so they add extra, I suppose, information onto function arguments and variable declarations and such, and allow these libraries to either use them to add extra functionality, or in the case of static type checkers, to actually check you know, that everything is working fine, that everything is as expected before running it. It also makes automatic documentation easy to work with. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider like it to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. An important thing to get out of the way right at the very start is that Python is a dynamically typed language. Now what this means is if I were to do, say, x equals 5, uh, Python would be able to automatically work out that this is an integer or that x is an integer. You wouldn't be able to do um, <clears throat> a type in here. As you can see, you get an error. However, as of Python 3.5, there is actually a way to specify the type of a variable. The important thing with this is that it does not turn Python into a statically typed language. If you want to turn Python into a statically typed language, you need to use Cython. I'll make a video on Cython at some other point. Um, what it does do is it allows for two things. One, for linters and static type checkers to you know, make sure everything is correct. And two, it allows libraries to do fancy things with the actual type annotations themselves. So for example, if you have a command line interface, all of your arguments are going to be strings. However, you may want to actually convert one of these arguments to an integer where you can use a type in annotation and libraries can actually access these well. And, and you can access these as well. I think it's something in the inspect.parameter or something like that. Um, but you can actually access those, check the type hint, and then do something based on that. Now, we're not really going to be covering that in this video. We are going to be uh, gently brushing over the whole static type checker thing. But this is mainly going to be syntax to use. So if we do an import, import typing uh, is generally what we use. And then I do as t just to kind of keep things a bit clean. And then we're going to borrow a function that we had before. So this is what you would do kind of normally in Python. So you have display by, I think this is the args and quags video. You have name, age, and then job equals none. And you could do something like job text equals I am a, I keep smashing my microphone against my watch. That's probably not a good thing. Just gonna move that up. Uh, if job else I am unemployed, it just makes things a little easier to stitch the sentence together. Pretend that sentence made a <laughs> sense. <laughs> I'm going to do my name is name, I am age, years, old, and, you know, and, th and then we have the job text, which is then kind of already sorted out for us. And if we were to just, you know, make our little scripts, if name double equals main, and then display bio uh, <laughs> Ethan, which is my name, as I say at the start of every video and people still tell me, uh, and then we do python type ints, uh, dot py. My name is Ethan, I'm 22 years old and I am unemployed. All of these things are true. Woo. So going back to the previous example I had at the start, we'll just do it here, of x equals 5. Now if you wanted to say that x should be an integer, you can do x colon int equals 5. And then if you had uh, 5 like this, it wouldn't error yet because we actually need to install some sort of static type checker. Now the normal one is mypy, so I'm going to just pip install mypy real quick. And then in VS Code Control Shift P select linter mypy. And then once everything kind of loads up, there we go, we start getting an error. Uh, I'm not sure it's super clear. Oh yeah, incompatible types and assignment, expression has type string, variable has type integer. So X is supposed to be an integer. The Python program will still run perfectly fine. Uh, it won't actually error, but you'll just kind of get this little sort of warning per se. And if we change this back to a to a normal five, it's perfectly fine with it. And we can do that in functions as well. That's generally where they're more used. Uh, so we can have our name equals a string, age equals an int, and our job can be a t dot optional of a string. And then you need to separate these out as well. And this t dot optional is one of a few different things that you can do with the typing library. So this basically says string or none, and it's the equivalent of t dot union string none. So if you expected something to be a string or an integer, you can do something like that. Or if you're expecting it to be, you know, a, a string or a list, you could do that. Uh, or you can even do something like t.listen and kind of specify, you know, that it's going to be like a list of strings or something. There's a lot you can do with this. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail. Um, and we're just going to leave this one as an optional. So this essentially saying string or none. Um, and we set the default as none. You don't have to set it at default as none, because uh, of course none could be passed in, but 
generally speaking, you would see uh, equals none here. And then if we go down here and we say this is a string again, we'll get an error. It will still run, of course, because it's not uh, because Python isn't actually checking it. This is my Py saying, "Oh, this is you know this is an incompatible type. It expected integer. You've got a string. Something may be broken." And this is the basic idea of type annotations. However, there is one more step you can do, and you can actually specify a return type to a function. So in this case, it's going to be. Um, none because we're not actually returning anything uh, however you could say if it was returning a string you do string if it was returning a list do a list you know you, you could do all sorts of stuff with that you know I might as well leave the none in there uh, and again it's not going to have any you know effect on the running of the program it's going to be more you know the uh, the the, uh, the linters and the, and the libraries that are actually using these annotations to work stuff out for themselves before I go, there is one other thing that I want to mention. Now, as of as of recording, Python 3.10 isn't properly out. Uh, only the uh, only the beta 4 is out currently. However, this whole syntax changes a little bit in Python 3.10. It is optional though. Um, but essentially, what you could do now, instead of t dot optional string equals none, you could just do string pipe none. And this is it going to? Okay, yeah, it's saying it requires 3.10 or newer. I think the interpreter hasn't been updated for some reason. Uh, even though I have definitely, hang on, if, if, I close, if I close Visual Studio Code down, it's probably still trying to use the wrong venv because I replaced the venv. If you get a virtual environment 3.10.4 going, then you see <laughs> uh, this is actually now, you know, a valid thing you can do. And this is kind of a lot cleaner than having to type. You don't really need the typing for most of this anymore. Um, <clears throat> because a lot of it is handled by, you know, this expression here. So this is now saying string or none. It's saying exactly the same stuff as the as it was before. Uh, but obviously this is only available in Python 3.10, unless you import them from the future library, but we're going to be talking about that in the next video. If you want a TLDR of that real quick, you can do, it actually has to be at the top, although it's a complaint. You do from future uh, import annotations, and then once you do that, suddenly the syntax will work in, I think, Python 3.7 and up. Um, it definitely works in 3.9. It says 3.7. However, we will be talking about the future library in the next video. So stick around for that if you're interested in that. But yeah, that is all I wanted to say about typing annotations. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be scared to leave them in the comments below. Or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. With that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where, well, as I said, we talk about the future library. So I'll see you for that.